Praise the Lord. Can we do a better praise the Lord? Come on. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Roshan and team. That was a blessed worship that we had. I stand here because I have the immense pleasure and honor to welcome once again, like Pastor Thomas welcomed uh, Pastor Lancy Fernandez from uh, Mumbai, uh, specifically Dombivli, which is war where I was saved and Pastor baptized me. He's been a mentor and a good friend, a gentle, humble, yet firm leader, a servant leader. That's, that's some of the words that comes, comes to my mind when I think of him. Um, he uh, was working for Canara Bank, if you know, those, are from, uh, those of you from India would know. Uh, he used to work for Canara Bank, but God called him out uh, shortly after he was married, and he just stepped out of, uh, just stepped out of that job, you know, uh, by faith with his wife, Emilia, and he came to a land that he did not know anything about. So he was, you know, this was a completely, he, I don't think you, you had been to this place before, right, Pastor? So, yeah, so he just followed the Lord's leading, and God used him to plant a church, and that church has grown so much now, and that church has sent out so many people. And by God's grace, uh, he's, um, you know, he, God has used him to plant churches in five different uh, districts in Maharashtra. By God's grace, he has um, pioneered some work in Gujarat, uh, Kerala, and through Kerala, actually, he was just telling me this morning how he is reaching out to the northern states through Kerala because people are coming to Kerala to work. And, you know, uh, so uh, pastors, uh, through pastors' um, efforts and God's grace, uh, they are ministering to those people and they are going back to their home states and their communities and they are, uh, you know, doing wonderful things for God. Um, so once again... Uh, Pastor uh, Lancy Fernandez, he has one wife, <laughs> once again, like Sister Emilia, uh, like I mentioned, uh, three children, Rebecca, the oldest, and then we have Joel and John. Uh, all three of them, uh, Rebecca is married and uh, to Nishant, once again, I know Nishant very well. Uh, they have two uh, children, a daughter and a son, and Joel and John, they have graduated from college and they are working uh, you know, in their own fields. Um, so I once again wanted to uh, also thank uh, Walson Uncle and Pastor Thomas for this opportunity that uh, he, they have provided for uh, Pastor Lancy to come and minister to us. Pastor Lancy, would you come and bless us with the word of God? Good afternoon. And a warm welcome greeting from my church in Dumbuvli. I am very honored this morning uh, to hear from uh, Varghese. You call him Georgie, but we used to call him Joy. And uh, even my wife uh, sent a message this morning, oh, so you are very happy with Joy. Uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. I'm deeply blessed to be here, and uh, I remember last year at this time, I was in the hospital, languishing between life and death, and here I am, this afternoon before you, it has been the grace of God and the prayer of all you saints, even a church here far away from my country was praying for me. And I am here in answer to the prayer of his saints. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that introduction, uh, Georgie, as they call you here. Uh, thank you, Pastor Thomas, for having me here to share God's word. I am so blessed. Uh, to be in this land. I know this land has many great things and many great servants of God sent forth into various parts of the world. And uh, this land has been a blessing. So 
Uh, as I stand here, uh, I don't want to say much about myself, but it, because it is not about me, it is about him. It is about our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to begin with this prayer from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 21. Not only is this my prayer, but I want to share something so that uh, we might be provoked this morning to run after God, to seek after Him, to seek those things that for which He has taken control of us. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceedingly greatness of his power to us, towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Next time, when I will be here, I want to see this church packed beyond capacity. This morning we were talking about the heavenly portal. The portal where God communes with his people. And the peop that, is a, that is open heaven it talks about. And I believe this place is that. Amen. 2019. Uh, when I landed in Ames, Iowa, I called up Varghese and he said, Pastor, I want you to be here. I said, I am not planned to come here, but the next time I will come. And here I am the second time and I am here in this place. But the next time I come, I will see this place filled with the people of God. Amen? And there are many people from India who are living here in this place as well. Uh, Varghese talked about Kerala. Just to give you a small thing that the Lord actually, when I was traveling the first time to Kerala, we had planted a church through one of our members of our church who went there. And I was sleeping in that train, Konkan Railway. The Lord woke me up in the night. And he called me, not by Lancy, he said, Thomas. My second name is Thomas. And I said, and, and I said Lord, are you calling me? I couldn't sleep then. And he says, yes, I am sending you to the land of Thomas, where my servant Thomas went. Because from the south, we are going to reach the north. And when, the, when I landed there, I said to Anil, who is uh, uh, one of our pastor there, I said, from the south, we are going to reach the north. And rightly so, we could reach out from the south, we could reach out to many states in the north. So many of these people who come there. 
they have been saved baptized trained to take small groups and reach out to their community last year just before i could go to the uh, uh, when i had this heart problem just before that i was in orissa and we went to a village and in in that village we found more than 12 to 13 families who whose member of uh, at least one member of that family was saved in our kerala church god is well able to do much more than what we can ask or imagine or think and i want to speak forth that this church will be a blessing to the community in kuku kukamanga right <laughs> rancho kukamanga yeah okay i didn't get that word correctly but i tried so this this afternoon this is not only my prayer but also my message and i want you to look at three different words the first word and and very often we use this word interchangeably actually and in hindi it is translated you know knowledge wisdom understanding gyan buddhi samaj these words are interchangeably used and very often we don't realize that these words are very powerful now why do i say that because in our walk with the lord god wants us to know him very personally amen not about him but to know him personally knowledge now if you look at this word knowledge i know Uh, this is a english speaking community and uh, knowledge is information that we get right and we are living in the world of information technology now how do we get this information we get this information through our senses we have five senses seeing smelling hearing taste and touch so we gather information through these five senses now i am not talking just about information in the natural or uh, knowledge in the natural i am talking about revelatory knowledge that come through our spiritual senses as well spiritual revelatory knowledge come through our spiritual senses now we know in hebrews 11:3 it says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible visible there is a physical world and there is a spiritual world as well very often we discount the spiritual world beloved as much as the physical world is real the spiritual world is as well real so as in the natural so in the spiritual so just as we use our physical senses the bible talks about exercising our spiritual senses so that we begin to operate in the revelatory how do we train our spiritual senses how do we exercise our spiritual senses how now we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god faith comes it says 
Even if we lack faith, we, can, we need to build up our faith by hearing God's word. Now, we've heard that very often. But practically, how much time do we devote to build up our faith? Now, many of us here, we have gone through college, spent much time in learning some stream, you know, either arts or science or, you know, IT or whatever. We have spent several years in studying. I'm not saying reading alone, but studying. And I want to challenge us this afternoon to not just read, but to go beyond that to study God's word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. What is that substance? That which doesn't change, that which is for eternal, It is God's word. Faith that is based on God's word. As I said, this morning I want to challenge us not just to read, but to go beyond reading The next word that is mentioned there is understanding. In the parable of the sower of the seed, seed, the sower goes and seed, I mean sow seeds, right? The Bible says some falls on the wayside and quickly the birds come and eat it up. And Jesus gives us the explanation of what it means. Those words which we hear and do not understand is picked up by the devil and we lose it. It doesn't bear fruit It doesn't produce the fruit for which it was intended, for which it was sent. Now, how do we go from knowledge to understanding? How do I travel from knowledge to understanding? The third word that we'll talk about is wisdom. Understanding comes by meditation. Now meditation is not just, you know, sitting down and saying some words or emptying your mind. I'm not talking about transcendental meditation, which America is going into actually. Many people are becoming sages and, you know, going into meditation. I'm talking about not emptying ourselves, but filling ourselves with God's word, which is eternal, which cannot pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, he says, my words will never pass. Forever his word is settled in heaven. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen? Joshua 1.8 says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it once a day. 
early in the morning perhaps no day and night and it doesn't stop there he goes a step further and say and do what it says and you shall observe to do according to what it is written and then he says that you shall make your ways prosperous and you shall have not just simple success but good success amen just as we have done a good study of the field that you are working in i want to provoke you this morning this afternoon to not take that book lightly because it has the power to change our lives amen and not just our lives but then bless others as well to the way we live to the things that we do because what is stored in will surely come out when a lime is squeezed and the juice comes out it's not sweet it is sour what is inside will come forth when circumstances and trials and tribulations and persecutions and difficult times come our way life will still come forth because his word is life Amen. Amen. The Bible commands us commands us to get wisdom and understanding. So, if we are at the stage of just knowledge, getting facts about God's word, good. let us go further to gain understanding asking the right questions in the end i am going to ask us a few questions you know god asks us questions does he ask us questions in the bible there are lots of questions that he has asked and when he asks us questions what does he causes us to do he makes us think asking the right question what this verse means what does this scripture says what is god expecting of me what is he trying to say and as we dwell on that we are actually meditating on god's word you see in a cow the cow eats lot of grass and and the green things that he gets but after a while when he sits down he begins to remove all that he has eaten and begins to chew it beloved every day as we hear god's word we need to bring it forth so that we understand what god is saying let's not remain on just hearing but understanding yeah proverbs 5 4 verses 5 to 7 it says get wisdom get understanding do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth do not forsake her she will preserve you love her and she will keep you wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all your get getting get understanding so understanding we've heard what is wisdom therefore what is jesus what what question does jesus says what is wisdom according to jesus he who has my word 
and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father in heaven, and I too will love him and manifest myself to him. You want God to manifest in and through your life? Yes. Begin to understand what he says and obey him. Wisdom is the application of God's word. He who hears my words and does them is a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Wisdom is what? Therefore, hearing God's word and doing it. The application of God's word, living it out on a day-to-day -day basis is wisdom coming forth. So, I leave you with these three words. Wisdom is a principal thing. How we need to live our lives in this ungodly world that is around us. How we can be light in darkness. How we can be the salt and influencers in this world. Don't take God's word lightly. And in closing, I want to say, I will read one prayer over us, but I want to ask these three questions which God asked different people at different times. First, he asked Adam, where are you? Genesis 3.9. Was he playing hide and seek with Adam? Did he not know? He asked this to Adam to make him think, where are you? Then he asked Cain another question in 4.9, Genesis 4.9, 3.9, 4.9, it says, where is your brother Abel? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Where is your brother? Think what God is saying to us. Where are you? Where do you stand? Where is your brother? And finally, in 1 Kings, again 19.9, he says to Elijah. Elijah was running away. Hid himself in a cave. And he says, and there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Put your name there. <clears throat> this morning, as we were traveling back from LA airport, Georgie and myself, we were talking. He said, I, I am doing whatever I can. I said, Georgie, this is not enough. Vargis, this is not enough. Not whatever you can, but whatever you must. We are all trying to do whatever we can. What are you doing here? Why has God planted you at this time and in this place? Here. Yeah. And now. And the final question I want to leave with you, you have to answer it. If time and money and nothing else would matter, what will you do? What will I do? Let's close our eyes.